facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. And welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Today I'm going to welcome back a very wonderful guest, Gary Kulik. And Gary, uh, you're now an MBA graduate student, am I correct? That's correct. Each time I see you, uh, you graduated, I remember, and got your BA degree or BS degree. Or what is it, BA or BS? Bachelor's of Science. Bachelor of <laughs> Science degree. Now you're just you're graduating, getting your MBA degree. And today we have a wonderful topic on political bullying on Facebook and in our relationships. I want to read just a little something from a fellow colleague uh, that uh, was, had been on my show, Gary Midiff, Midkiff, and he wrote this, and I'm really in agreement with him, and I really want to read this to our viewers. I am increasingly concerned not only about the inability of many people to talk with those who have a different political uh, perspective, but also the way many of those people justify their antag antagonism and anger. I have been told that yelling is the only way to make the other side hear. It is literally impossible to think rationally when one is being screamed at or threatened. Do some really believe that this is the path and the best path one is that is available to others? And then it goes on and says, I ask all of you to think about this, think about your political discussions, think about the methods you have to keep conversations civil and productive. Perhaps if we share ideas with each other, we can awake the gentle art of civil discourse. Isn't that powerful, Gary? Definitely a very powerful statement, uh, but at the same time quite unsettling because, you know, I know the feeling all too well because I found myself in a similar situation many times before. And uh, I can definitely relate to, uh, to an extent um, I, where I found myself in situations where I haven't been able to talk openly with people, and we've had disagreements, and it's gone south. Exactly. And, you know, with you, Gary, it's, a, it's even more of a challenge because the last show was the challenge of being gay in a heterosexual world. And here, being gay Republican, a Trump right. supporter, I That's believe, right. Oh, you've been called an Uncle Tom, you've been called a racist, fascist, Nazi, white supremacist. Oh, and um, it's been very difficult for you. I know you take both values. You have a Christian value and you have a Jewish value because of your parents. One's Christian, one's Jewish. And so you come from both sides of the fence and you know what it is to be picked on on all accounts. Oh, definitely. And so what is, why do you feel that people um, and I've had my own experience, and it happened to me a couple of weeks ago when I voiced my own opinion about something in politics, and people started, three of the people in the car that I was with started screaming at me. They said, how can a smart girl, PhD psychologist, think that way? It was so frustrating that I thought any minute, I'm going to have the car stop. It would have been easier for me to walk to the nearest uh, restaurant or gas station from the expressway than to be in the car that's being bullied. And so that was my one of my first times that, you know, I always have, a, I've had programs on children being bullied. And this was my first time that I personally experienced being bullied. And this was not, uh, this was the first time, but it's happened uh, by, it's happening again and again. So, and I know for you, it's even worse than the situation that I experienced. Absolutely. So, I mean, I'll definitely start out with, you know, I, I remember coming out as openly gay. 
And I don't even remember experiencing half of what I've experienced coming out as an openly gay conservative. Uh, I didn't experience bigotry and, and people name calling me and people making me feel like it wasn't okay to be who I was or, or have my opinions be the way that they were about certain things. And ultimately, you know, what led me to coming out as a gay conservative was um, just being able to formulate my own opinions about certain things, um, certain things that are going on in our country right now and, and, and styles of government. And um, for me, you know, to, to me, I, I haven't changed. I, I've never been the person to kind of um, go along with what I call the group think. I always kind of veer off and establish my own opinions and I don't follow the crowd. I really, I do what I feel I think is best and I don't let people peer pressure me into thinking a certain way. I have the ability to think for myself and make my own decisions. And you know, some people are respectful of those decisions and thank you to those people who have been very respectful of those um, idea, you know, ideas and decisions that I've thought about. And you know, there's some people that are just not and they're not the tolerant people that they proclaim to be. Um, so that is what I've been experiencing these last almost two years we're going on now. And that's interesting because, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's equally difficult. And so many things are, we're talking about being bullied on Facebook. In fact, um, I think you and I are on Facebook. We're, we're on Facebook together, and we're also on Facebook. Um, I believe, I don't know if you uh, took them off of your Facebook, but I've had uh, one of our mutual friends has been sending a lot of really bad material. Uh, one was with um, a Time magazine with uh, President Trump on the magazine and a dog standing right over the dog using the bathroom right on top of the magazine. And the other one I received was with Donald Trump in a Hitler, Hitler's uniform and, you know, saluting like Hitler did. And I think for Jewish people, uh, I think that is extremely, I mean, it's, it, uh, it was a, a, a somebody that used to, um, was somebody that I knew that used to come to my house all the time. And uh, now they don't because I couldn't handle, every time I saw her, I kept seeing Donald Trump in his Hitler uniform doing the Nazi salute. And it was very, I mean, with all the people that came out of the Holocaust to see something like that. And I think we're talking at lunch that your grandmother, who came from Poland, you were telling me some stories Absolutely. about her feelings about some of the stuff that went on. Could you tell our viewers a little bit about your grandmother? Absolutely. So I, I will say, you know, it, what I, unfortunately, what I've seen is so much of this political propaganda and, and um, just such division amongst opinions and people, it's really brought out the worst in a lot of people. And um, what bothers me the most is, you know, this was a, supposedly a group of people that were very sensitive to, to other people's feelings and opinions, yet at the same time, they're so they're so, they're able to drop the words fascist, Nazi, uh, white supremacists so easily and they don't even really take into consideration w the meaning behind some of those phrases and terms um, and so leading back into what my grandma was saying you know I, I have spoken to my grandmother this is my, my father's side of the family um, she was not Jewish however she did grow up in during the Holocaust and experienced firsthand what what fascism was and um, has shared those stories with me and after listening to those stories and, and hearing people, you know, use the word fascism um, so lightly, the two are not comparable. It, it, two separate things, totally different, and, and, and quite rather insulting when you when you drop that term. Because if you had any idea what fascism was, and, and you know, for me, I've listened to my grandmother's stories, so I have a little bit of an idea of what 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 living under you know a dictatorship or, or fascism would be the two are not comparable they're not and 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 you know using the term nazi you know for for people that have gone and, and survived the holocaust or lived through the holocaust died in the holocaust had family members that have passed or you know perished in the holocaust to use that term uh so insensitively is completely insulting and, and it's just terrible it's just absolutely terrible it, 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 
it really it hits close to home for me right. because I ha I've had you know relatives that that lived through that. Um, I, I don't I don't believe I have anyone on my mother's side who is Jewish that perished during the Holocaust. But you know, I've heard the stories. I've been to museums, and you just cannot compare the two. And I really wish people would stop using that term, uh, those terminologies, so lightly. Right and insensitively, right. or even racist. You know, uh, if you if you say one thing uh, about even uh, even about President um, Obama, if you say something that you didn't like, something about maybe his health care or something, they call you a racist right away. I mean, I I, I mean it's 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 unreal. I mean, one of my uh, closest friends who really, um, you know, she was there for me when time was really, really bad many years ago. She happened to be an African-American woman who he, she and I used to pal around all the time together. She was at, you know, she is, I haven't seen her in years. She may have been passed away, but because I had moved away and lost touch with her. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be where I am today. And sometimes when I'm called a racist, I think, what are they talking about? Racist? Oh my God. You know, that's the last thing. Just because I disagree with something doesn't mean I'm a racist. And people are, are, are being called that every single day of their life if they don't agree with something. And these words are just really, really unsettling. Uh, I, something from that just came out on, on bullying, and this is from Kanye West, who was recently on the Jimmy Kimmel Show, and those that don't know Con, Kanye West, he's an American songwriter, record producer, and rapper. And he talked about being bullied as a Trump supporter. And he said, you can't bully me, liberals. Can't bully me, news. Can't bully me, the hip hop community can't bully me. If I'm afraid to be me, I'm no longer ye. And those, that's a mouthful. And I, and, uh, I think, you know, somebody that came out and, I mean, he's being bullied as well. And he's standing up for himself. We, we were even talking about that Roseanne Barr incident where she, um, they got rid of her because of her her, uh, what happened with her view uh, that she tweeted, I guess, in the middle of the night on Valerie Jarrett. And what did you say about that? And you thought it was an excuse for... I, I did hear about that. And, you know, I, I looked into it. I really looked into it closely. And I said, you know, it probably wasn't the smartest remark to make, but to have your entire show, career, contracts canceled immediately as a result of that... Um, I felt like was unnecessary and it was as if ABC was looking for the smallest thing or, or just smallest little thing that they could possibly take and use against her and make it so that her show was canceled and she's no longer to have her no, no longer able to have her voices or opinions heard through her television show in which the, in, in the television show she's an open Trump supporter and uh, I just felt like they could have, you know, maybe they could have, requ you know, requested that she apologize or something. But to go that far, cancel the whole show and make it so that this woman could no longer have her voice heard, um, seemed to be almost exactly what they had in mind. So you think it really wasn't about as much as what she said because she really came out and apologized. I, she I think she's horrible. been on several shows, uh, all over from. Uh, CNN to Fox to MSNBC. She's been all over to apologize, and you feel that was their way to shut her up. It was their excuse to really get rid of her because Peter Fonda, in his tweet about Baron Trump saying that they should put him in a cage with pedophiles, and he's still making movies, and he barely apologized for that remark, which to me was so much more traumatizing than the remark that um, Roseanne Barr made. Uh, was I mean, it, it's no, there's no comparison. He's still making movies. He's still being on different television shows. No one is doing that to him, and yet Roseanne Barr was completely... You know, as you said, probably the excuse to get rid of her because they didn't like her political views. Absolutely. That could be, that could be part of it, too. Absolutely. I, I think it's one-sidedness, hypocrisy at its finest. 
And in addition to that, you know, she's not the only one that's been censored. We have YouTube, um, people that have YouTube channels. Um, Diamond and Silk was another one. Uh, Tommy Lahren, a co couple other people on YouTube uh, that have had their videos censored or removed on YouTube. Uh, a lot of censorship going on there. And they haven't even said anything that's even that inappropriate. You know, nothing, nothing that would that I would imagine would be de should be deemed as inappropriate. They are still being silenced and censored. Oh, I do a lot of I do a lot of research. I, I run a current events uh, for the Highwood Library, um, in which I have both Democrats, Republicans, Independents, liber, um, liberals, and um, uh, libertarians. I should say we uh, and um, I have to look at a lot of research for and against, pro and con, and I'm having trouble right now finding the pro. If I want something that's pro about a candidate, I'm having difficulty getting it. I'm getting the negative on some of them, but I'm not getting the positive. So something, and I Google everything, and I try to do a lot of different types of research, and I, I know some of this stuff is not being brought into, it's not putting put on Google. And Definitely it's not. getting, they're getting rid of it. So it's very hard to do research if they're taking a lot of things off that you need uh, on, on this, you know, it's very challenging. And also, just recently I heard uh, today on one of the morning shows that I was watching that uh, the Academy Awards are losing a lot of viewers because people say they want to listen to the Academy Awards. They want to just enjoy the, you know, the movies, the films. That they want to hear about, you know, th that's why they go to the movies or they go to films to get away from politics. And when you go to, when you listen to the Academy Awards, one right after the other is uh, bashing, let's say, the president. Absolutely. One by one by one, and nobody wants to hear it anymore. I mean, it's one thing they do it on uh, the different, you know, CNN, MSNBC, and a lot of these news stations that they're bashing. I mean, I've never heard anything like this before. I remember when I had uh, somebody in my current events uh, said something very negative about President Obama. I said, wait a minute. You could say what you can about you don't like one of his policies, you, you disagree with it, but you don't bash the president. That is not acceptable in my current events. You can bash if you want one of the policies. You don't like the health care because it's too high. It's causing a lot of uh, people can't go to their doctors or can't go to the hospitals they want to. That's fine. But don't, and don't do that to the president. Be respectful. And I have not seen this happening um, one by one. I mean, you turn on all these stations. You turn on all the, even, even the uh, type that are comedian, with comedians. Uh, you know, again, Kimmel and uh, a lot of the other uh, stations, you know, that you're watching some of these fun shows, you know, even Saturday Night Live, bash, bash, bash. Oh, I, I mean, you, it's so much hatred going on and bullying, and people don't realize, I mean, bullying in, uh, in restaurants. Oh, out of control. It's really, I mean, Jeff Sessions, uh, was just, uh, he was taking a picture with a manager in a restaurant just recently, and now the manager of the restaurant and the employees of that restaurant are being bullied because he took a picture with, uh, Jeff Sessions took a picture with a manager. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, her family was asked to leave a restaurant because they didn't like her politics. And uh, another, Kristen Nielsen, uh, people came into the restaurant while she was eating and yelled at her and, uh, because they didn't like her politics. And, um, and here, uh, a Democrat from California, Representative Maxine Wa Waters, just said, encourage, she was encouraging activists to continue uh, hounding Trump cabinet members whenever, 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 and wherever they find them. Restaurants, bowling alleys, grocery stores, what have you. Start bullying them. Start making them feel that they need to leave the restaurant and the stores. What do you say about all all this that's going on right now. I say it's outrageous. It's uncalled for. It's outrageous and it should not be tolerated. And what bothers me the most is the hypocrisy within all of that. You've had incidents where 
um, we've had gay couples go into bakeries and, and request to have their wedding cake be made at a certain specific bakery, and they've been turned away at the door, and, or not at the door, but you know they were denied service, mm -hmm. and they were so upset about that. And I think it's wrong that you, you know, maybe it's it's on the opposite end, but you're essentially inflicting the same. Um, discrimination you know someone based off of you know in that case it was based off of maybe someone's sexual orientation but in this case it's based off of someone's political preference so to speak and uh, are putting people through the same harm and and discrimination it's not okay when you turn away a gay couple and deny them service but why is it okay when you go and and, and deny sarah huckabee you know, someone who I who I think is a very respectable woman deny her service at a restaurant. With I her mean, family. how you know, two wrongs don't make a right, plain and simple. Yeah, and a person is if a bakery is open for the public, they should be able. To, you know, I mean, if it was a private bakery and somebody was just doing it from their home, that's one thing. But when when you're open to the public, you don't deny people. You know. I mean, unless you don't know how to make a, a cake, you know that uh, a wedding cake like this. But it's very, it's very, it's very hurtful to people. It is, and you know, for you know, the bakery was for religious purposes. But the bottom line is, it's the same principle. It's the same. It's the same scenario. You're being discriminated against for something that you. It's it's unfair, and it's it's discrimination at its finest. And denying a couples that are gay uh, that they can't adopt. That's another thing, another and thing? I think yeah. that's for that is wrong in itself too. I, I agree, I agree. Um, I yeah. mean, a, a nice, respectable couple. Would you rather leave those children in in uh, foster homes, orphanages, and you know, the, instead of denying people that can show a lot of love? I mean, one of your grandmothers that I do know um, happened. To, you know, not the, uh, your grandmother. Um, who, uh, not the grandmother you were talking about from yes. the Holocaust, but your other grandmother, she was left in orphanages one by one by one, and she has all kinds of physical problems, emotional problems that was left in an orphanage for so many years. And here there are couples that want to give the children love and, and um, a good home, uh, good schooling, and they're denied. It's very unfortunate. So what, what do you think is happening? You know, what do you feel that for the gay community, um, how, how do you feel what's happening for you there? Um, so for me, I, I feel like, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to have some friends that were, were did, you know, uh, uphold the whole ideology that they are tolerant um, and that it is a tolerant community. But at the same time, I had many other people who I feel, uh, well, the proper term would be, you know, I felt very ostracized from the LGBT community. And it was very unfortunate. But at the same, uh, on the same note, um, you know, for many years I had, I had been seeking brotherhood. And the irony is I found a sense of brotherhood in the last place that I ever thought that I would ever find it. And that was the Republican Party. Um, I've met other gay and that's Trump unusual, supporters. And that's unusual because yeah. why, do, why do gay people seem that Democrats, uh, you know, that they'll do so much more for them than the Republican Party or the Libertarian Party? You know, doesn't have to be necessarily just a party. I, I think, you know, for a while the Democrat Party or, or, you know, what I consider to be classical liberalism is what was the advocate for you know progressive ideas such as uh, marriage equality, and and the idea of um, just the LGBT community as a whole. Those are the people you know that that was the party that was the advocate, and it's changed. It's changed. It's not what it used to be. To me, classical. I'm still a classical liberal to this day. I believe in, in people being able to freely express themselves and to be able to, to belong, have a sense of belonging and, and be recognized. 
I'm still a classical liberal to this day, but what I've learned is the progressive movement, the liberal movement, it's changed. It's no longer what it used to be. The Democrat Party ha is, has changed, and I see it as something entirely different. And what I've learned is my views are now more um, towards the Libertarian Party, more towards being a moderate conservative when it comes to certain things, because I don't like what uh, the left has been promoting. I feel like um, you know, many have actually referred to it as the regressive left because it's caused people to really almost hate one another. And it's caused so much division in this country, um, a political correctness culture. I don't think that's helped um, social progressiveness whatsoever. I think it's helped people actually despise um, any of those ideas. And that's where, you know, I kind of had this aha moment about two years ago when I said this is really no longer where my, where my views um, lie and I need to find a different, a new home. And I found um, the Republican Party that uh, really welcomed me with open arms. Um, I'll never forget the first time I attended a Republican event. And I went out and I bought, uh, had a shirt custom made that said, Gays for Trump. And I went to this event called the Deplora Ball. This was when I lived in California. And I showed up uh, with a friend and I was, I was really nervous because of all the terrible things I've said that, you know, Republican uh, and how Republicans feel about gay people. And I showed up and it was a wonderful evening. I had people coming up to me asking if they could get a photo. Um, you had people of all different eth ethnicities um, and there were other gay people there too. It was, it was, it was mind blowing. And, um, you know, it was when I kind of came to the realization that, you know what, I found myself a new home. And not only that, um, I believe in this and I, I want to continue being involved. And so I, therefore I, I became very open uh, on Facebook for two reasons, just because, you know, I've always been the type of person that's always kind of embraced these things about me, but to also find other people like me. Just like the first time when I came out as an openly, mm -hmm. you know, openly gay, I wanted to find other people that were like me. Yes. And the I truth remember. is there are other people like me. There are other gay conservatives. Yes. Um, we're definitely a minority, but we're still out there and we're not going anywhere. It, and it's it, always it, a pleasure to meet more of them. And that's <laughs> why I had you on the show today because I remember when you did come out, the challenge of being gay in a heterosexual world, and now you, you came out as a Republican, and see your view.